Dizzy of the Supernatural's crew, Rock the Price Seven Commandos, and also representing Cartel Creative. Execution, most people think execution is just about hitting your moves, but it's not. Execution has five very important components to execution that somebody must do perfect in order to, in order to score perfect. The first one is they have to execute their confidence, right? If they're not confident whatsoever, they cannot score perfect in execution. The second thing they have to execute is a rhythm, whether it be power, footwork, freezes, there needs to be some type of rhythm in order for them to get perfect in execution. Mm -hmm. They have to execute their moves, meaning they can't crash, mm -hmm. and they have to also execute their style, so their style can't be sloppy. Whether it's footwork, freezing, power, it can't be sloppy. The last thing they have to execute is something new every round. They can't repeat the same thing over and over and over. right? So all these five things are taken into account for execution, whether it be footworkers, originality people, even those Guys that stick their legs over there, yo, it's, it's, it's all accounted for, right? Mm -hmm. But those five things in execution. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of people talk about uh, that it might be a possibility that if there's a scoreboard, people will be focusing on the scoreboard rather than the dancing. I guess this would be equal to people at a basketball game, instead of watching the basketball, they're just looking at the scoreboard, mm -hmm. right? That doesn't make sense. I know the only the only part that I that does make sense though is that in the beginning to if people don't understand the scoreboard, they might take some time looking at it trying to figure it out. But the feedback that I've gotten from people who understand the scoreboard is that it makes breaking so much more exciting mm. when they understand it because they're watching the battle, mm. they look up and they say, "Oh, now he's winning." Oh no! And then the other person said, then then they do something crazy and okay, now they're winning. Now they're winning. Yes. And this is exactly what I wanted to do, right? This is my dream, mm -hmm. that the audience can connect to b-boying, to the mm -hmm. b-boys and know exactly what's happening rather mm -hmm. than just watching, not knowing what is foundation, they don't know what is originality, they don't know any of these things, mm -hmm. right? And they're just only looking at breaking mm -hmm. to see what's more entertaining. And that's not mm -hmm. what breaking is about. It's not about what's more entertaining, mm -hmm. right? These five parts of breaking need to be preserved and they need to be taught to the audience so that they can respect breaking for what it is and that's the purpose of the scoreboard mm. to show the audience who's winning so they can connect and to educate them about what b is all about mm. in the future uh, our plan and our goal mm. is to have official teachers and judges in every country in every city in even the smallest scenes all around the world mm. so that even the smallest event they can use the hour system because they don't have to fly top level judges to their small event right be, anybody can can learn to become an hour system judge but right now what we need to do is find people who are willing to learn these these categories learn the standards and then start going out and teaching them to other people so there's going to be administrators in every country and the administrators will have the scoring system and the eye touch and all that kind of stuff. And the smallest events just have to call them and then they can get their local judges who are all certified mm -hmm. and they can use the system in any place around the world. Mm -hmm. So that is the future goal that, uh, that we want to do really soon. But right now, you just need to take some time to get people more familiar with our system and to understand that there are standards that it's going to be based, that it is and it's going to be heavily based upon. Yeah, right now, I, we are in the talks with some other world championship level events to use the hour system as a world standard, especially for world championship events. Not just because, you know, they think it's cool, but mm -hmm. also because of all the benefits that it can give to these world championship events mm -hmm. that heavily rely on sponsors to fund the event. Mm -hmm. And the sponsor sometimes saying, why did they win? Why would we like them? Can you explain? And then they, they have to say to the sponsors, oh, because the judge just liked the other one better, right? So 
yes, we're speaking to a lot of uh, uh, other World Championship events who are interested. We've already used it at IBE for the Super Solo Battles. And currently we are using the, our system administrators and we're planting them all around the world in the future so that it's available for any event that wants to use it. Korea is where the Our System is, was officially, officially launched, mm. right? Even though we, it has been used all over Toronto and Canada at B-Boy Hoedown in the States, it's been used before because it's been around since 1999, but it's officially launched in Korea and being used here the most. Mm. And I know that the documentary and everything that I've been that has come out and all the support material has all been in English, mm. right? And I've heard that uh, there's some B-Boys that are asking the question, you explain it to the audience, you're explaining it to all the b-boys in the world, but you are not explaining it to us. And all I can say is that I'm really sorry, <laughs> you know, um, because I really do want to, want to, want to do, want to meet up with every single crew, and I want, mm. I want to explain as much as I can. The problem is that I don't speak Korean, and I need to find. I've been looking for some type of partners who want to partner in this because even though it's called the Our System because it's supposed to be for all of us, right? I'm looking for partners, I'm willing to partner up with anybody and anyone to make this dream of b-boy and grow big worldwide. I also want to say the reason why I'm in Korea is because I believe that Korea is the only place in the world that can take b-boying to a professional level, mm -hmm. right? And if Korea becomes the place where there is an association, mm -hmm. b-boys are making money, a judging system, an association, leagues, sponsors, and everything, the rest of the world's gonna follow, right? So that's the reason why I've come to Korea, and I'm not gonna leave until Korea is as big as it was in 2005, right, when it was at the high peak. I'm not gonna leave until it was like that, but this time, protected, right, with an association, educating the audience with a system, you know, and getting the sponsors and not allowing corporations to come in and take away things from us, because if if this system becomes the standard in Korea, no corporation can just come in and organize events. They're going to have to go to the Korean B-Boy Association and they're going to have to work with them in order to use, a, use the system for B-Boying. Otherwise, B-Boys are going to be like, I'm not going to enter your competition if you don't use a system because the system is the only thing that B-Boys can use to protect themselves. Right? Otherwise, some weird corporation come in and say, we're going to throw this jam and we're going to hire Usher to be the judge, you know, and hire Psy, right, like, <laughs> the judge. And there's nothing we can do about it, right, because they have money and they wave it around. But if we have a system, and we, all the b-boys know this is how b-boying is judged by foundation, originality, dynamics, execution, then people are going to say, that's not b-boying. And people are going to know. So, I'm not leaving until Korea is as big as it was in 2005 and bigger. First of all, the, why I think people criticize the system is for two reasons. Uh, one is uh, the lack of understanding of what the system is, what it's supposed to do, and what are the goals and dreams that we're trying to do, right? And that is my responsibility to get this information out to people, so I really thank All That Break for doing this interview. <laughs> um, second thing is uh, I think that one of the reasons why uh, they criticize is because there is a there is no unity in b-boying and what this system is trying to do is unite the b-boys together so it's obvious and we all know that there are different perspectives in breaking right and they fight with each other saying you're not a real b-boy oh your b-boy b-boying is too easy oh you're not original oh you're not even the b-boy why you're not something else like everyone's fighting and this system says that everyone's equal right and the system brings everything together and says, okay, we're all, we can, we can now understand each other. There are a lot of b-boys who do not want to accept the unity of all the different b-boys. They want to say that their perspective is more important than all the other ones, right? And so this is the, these are the people that are going to be, have a more difficult time um, accepting the system, right? But the, the faster that people can say, you know what, we're all equal b-boys. All our approaches are equal. And what, what matters now is how we put it out on the dance floor, right? Now about the haters, uh, I have had haters all my life. And <laughs> haters is gonna if, if you're ever doing anything worth worth looking at, 
you're gonna have haters, right? No matter how good your style is, you're gonna have haters. No matter how good your, your thinking is, people are gonna hate. No matter how good looking you are, people are gonna hate, right? So the only thing you can do is look at it like, there's a thin line between love and hate. Mm -hmm. And they just cross that line, so deep down inside they really love you, right? <laughs> so, that's how I deal with it, right? Yeah. And I think that's how everyone should as well. <laughs> And the reason for this is because two reasons, right? One, I've been a b-boy for 19 years, almost 20 years now. And I've been through it all. I've come from a, be a tough, tough past with a lot of gangs and violence. And I saw b-boying grow, right? And I know how hard it is to be a b-boy and how to live. You know, I've, after getting, getting married and having my own place, I went into debt and I realized I, that it's impossible to make money off b-boying. I'm like, why? Why is it so hard for me? How am I going to raise my own children and my kids in the future that I hope I have, right? If I don't, you know, just living like this. I'm, I had my own office in Toronto. I was throwing events and I, was, I just found myself begging sponsors. I felt like a beggar saying, will you sponsor our event? Will you sponsor our event? And I just seen the way that they treat us and they treat b-boys. And, and, I, and I knew that the only way for b-boying, for, for anyone to make money, not just myself, is if b-boying can grow bigger. So that's the first reason. Second reason was, uh, like, you know, it's been a dream of mine. Uh, when I was 18, I was sent to the Philippines because I was in a lot of trouble. And there I had a dream that uh, I walked into a, a room. And, and back then, b-boying was only a gang thing. Like, you know, like, that's how I got into breaking because my gang had two b-boys. And then that's how I joined. And then other gangs had few b-boys and they came together and that became Supernaturals. And uh, so that's the, there was no competitions, there was nothing like that. It was just parties, fighting, breaking, and trying to get girls. And one day I had a dream when I was in the Philippines that I, I saw a, a, stadi a stadium, and in the middle of the stadium, b-boys came up on the stage and started battling, and a spotlight came on the DJ, and then they just went crazy, and the crowd was going nuts. And when I woke up, I was like, that was an amazing dream. And then as I saw... When I first came to Korea in 2004, it changed my life, right? I saw B-Boy Unit, and I saw the crowd, and I saw everything, and I started thinking that this dream can come true. And in 2004, uh, my life changed when I found, well, actually, when God found me. And I believe in my heart that God wants me to do this. He wants this for breaking. He wants this for B-Boying. He wants this to happen, and I... And I have to be the one to sacrifice my own b-boy career to make this happen so that everybody else can have a future and I'm willing to do this so that is the reason why I put everything into it because I know that it's what God wants me to do yeah I think yeah it is like I feel like I came here to Korea with nothing right just me and my wife not knowing what's gonna happen and it just seems like destiny is just leading up, leading everything for me, right? I don't feel like I'm doing this on my own strength. I feel like uh, the strength is given to me, and I believe that the strength comes from the love, you know, love in, love in my heart for, for what b-boying is, for the culture, for seeing... Korea, we only have two phases, actually two major phases, the 80s, ex 80s explosion and then Korea exploding in Korea. It's only about a matter of time before breaking explodes somewhere else in the world. And what I want to do is I want to be ready this time. Ready with a system and association to protect the to protect b-boying and a system to educate the audience so that it can just continue to grow. It'll be a, an effect. I don't think that, uh, you know, it's going to ruin the culture. Look at skateboarding. Skateboarding culture is, you know, they're they're, there's the pro skaters, the raw skaters. They have everything, right? And they're doing it right. And that's what I think that our community can do. And the first step is to unify, to unify us together. So... Yeah, I think it's worth it, man. This is this is worth it. This is what I live for, and I'll I'm ready to die trying. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, about living in Korea, uh, I think Korea is awesome. You know, uh, I'm one of those people that uh, I know I have a lot of foreigner friends that might say they don't understand the culture, but for me, to tell the truth, I really love Korean culture because. 
I, like the, the level of respect for each other is, to me, is amazing, right? Because of the whole respect of who's older. Um, the reason why I respect this so much is because I grew up in Toronto where you had to fight for respect, right? And you'd have younger kids trying to like bully you or gang up on you and there was no respect. And when I see the respect in Korea, I think you really have a really good thing. Mm -hmm. Plus, I love the food. I love uh, samgar, sam, samgyeopsal and soju <laughs> together. Uh, yeah, the food is really good. Uh, it's really good here being with my wife. And uh, lastly, my uh, last thing to say to the Korean b-boys out there is, uh, you know, I really want to meet up with you and I really want to, to speak with you about these plans and I want to help. I'm here not to tell you what to do, but I'm literally here to serve, to be a servant, okay? And uh, I'm not going to leave until breaking gets big again, <laughs> right? Because Korea is the only place that can do it, right? Mm -hmm. Korea has that responsibility of taking breaking to the next level. And if we don't do anything, we don't want, it, can, it, can, it, can, it can fade away. So we need to protect it and we need to keep things moving because everything is meant to keep on moving and keep on growing. Because when things stop growing, that's when they die. So, yeah. 감사합니다. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo, and shout out. Shout out to all that breaks for doing this interview. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see many more of these videos, not just in Korea, but worldwide. All right.